Welcome to Pot of Thunder, the recognized symbol of excellence in rock and roll podcasting. Brought to you by Blue Microphones. They look great. They sound even better. And if you're not using a blue microphone, go shit in your hat. Guess who it is today? You know me. It's my buddy Andy. That's right. It's your buddy Andy, America's little brother. Over there, there he is, smiling ear to ear. <laughs> the happiest man in podcasting. Oh That's him. That's Gnarly Nick. I, the doubt, garlic I doubt that uh, Richard Patrick ever gave such a glowing review of blue microphones. I'm sure he's never, not even close. I can't imagine. None of their endorsements. Probably, he probably just showed up and, look, here I am using it. Mm-hmm. None that, of their other endorsed talents are on this level. No. Of appreciation, at least. Of well, success, sir, that's a different story. They're, they're getting their money back and then some at this point. That's true. Well, certainly not Richard Patrick. He's a renowned asshole in the industry, <laughs> isn't he? I could see it that. Seems like he might be <laughs> renowned asshole. <laughs> I don't know if he's renowned, but I guess it, he's it's renowned possible. for being an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can be renowned for that. Speaking of renowned assholes, <laughs> there's three of us here today. That's gnarly Nick, the garlic dragon. He's the happiest man in podcasting. Oh, you know why? Ecstatic. Here's a fact that I don't know if anybody knows. I don't know if Chris even knows this fact, but here's a fact about Nick. Not once in his life, 40 years, has he ever gone on a diet. True. Never, ever. True. Just one of the many reasons he's the happiest man in podcasting. <laughs> we could share a new Uh-oh. one every week. Are you what? saying that someone would be unhappy going on a diet? Is this... Yes. Okay. Generally, they are, yes. But well, I, well, I, why would you need to go on a diet if you looked like I Nick? know, I'm just saying. It's just one of the many reasons. It's a I'll genetic sh- miracle. I will be oh, sharing boy. a new reason every week why Nick is the happiest <laughs> man in podcasting. That's this week's. Well, that's good. Something to look forward to. Never been on a diet, never trimmed his balls. Well, that was yeah, next week's. Now I have to skip ahead. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> a very special right. episode. Yeah, I mean, you're you're basically just going to go back and forth between those two. So, <laughs> you, might, you know, there's Never. not going to be any suspense, really. No, that's all right. It's all you need to be a happy, man. <laughs> and there he is over there, folks. You know him. You want him. We got him. There he is. I think we need a gunslinger. Somebody tough to tame this town. I think we need a gunslinger. There'll be justice all around. It's the breakout star of the podcast medium. Put your hands together for Chris L. Succumb to my power, my age, and my weight. All of which are considerable. <laughs> the dramatic pause this week. I almost forgot Even, the line. Oh, I was, it came off as an, it's intentional. <laughs> yeah, it worked. Even better. I'll before. own up to the fact that I almost forgot my own tagline. <laughs> it happens to me at the I beginning. I almost uh, reverted week. back to the original version in that order. That's Still right. works. Yeah, but you can go back and forth. Maybe we need a device to cover it up. Uh, like they say, Curly from the Three Stooges, when you do the... It was because he couldn't think of what he was supposed to say. Oh, really? Yeah, maybe we need some sort of uh, go-to comic device to cover it up. Maybe we'll stumble upon something. Okay, we could find something. Because goodness knows I'm usually the one who starts off on a statement and can't think of where he's going. So. Well, we could just do this. I could use time. it. <laughs> Speaking of trimming things down, uh-huh. I brought something, but oh. I don't know if it's going to be if it's going to be eaten by anybody. Mm, interesting. <clears throat> trimming things down. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess first of all, we should say what time it is. <laughs> Diet time.
You're going off on the drums there at the end. Yeah, wow. a little double kick work there at the end. Channeling your inner Lee Kerr's leg. Oh, yeah. We never did a tribute to him, huh? Huh? Maybe we'll get a belated one one of these days. He probably deserves it, but, uh, you know, it's kind of the... The Eric Carr syndrome, when you die in close proximity, if not the same day as other iconic artists, you tend to be forgotten. Mm-hmm. It's true. Bad timing. Terrible so, timing. The worst. So what do we got over there, Nick? We have some Italian sesame seed cookies. Hmm. Okay. I guess they're typically for weddings, but what do I care? Have you tried one? Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah. All right. That's good. Sesame seed cookie. Does that mean it's some kind of cookie with sesame seeds stuck to the outside, yeah. or are they threw out? No, they're they're no. on the outside. Okay, no. okay. I I toasted them a little bit first. Ooh, go that extra mile. Bring the toasted flavor sesame seeds. Nice. It's well, the only way, really. All right. You if you're know, not toasting your sesame seeds, then well, then you might as well hang out with Richard Patrick and his yeah. <laughs> le, his lesser quality blue microphones. Yeah, you're a rube if you don't toast your sesame seeds. Well, I guess that qualifies as a... Well, technically. Why wouldn't it? It does. I just don't know if it's time for one. Yeah. Time for a big treat. I think tomorrow is going to be time for a big treat. For yeah, me. I, 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 starting about ten thirty in the morning, I can uh, indulge in this baked treat. I, I assume these cookies have calories. A couple, yeah. Can't have them till ten thirty <laughs> tomorrow. But tomorrow they will be eaten. Yes, I will so take mine. We're on a delay. Enjoy it. We're on a yeah. delayed. Yeah, we don't want to. We don't want to lose the baked treat feature altogether, just because. Andy and I are a couple of fat asses who need to <laughs> take things in the other direction. Um, Andy, can you eat these at all, or how's that going well, with you? Here's the uh, thing that everybody wants to know. Tomorrow's my first cheat day on the oh, uh, you're diet. Doing that. Okay. Yep, three weeks in, I've got a cheat day. So right, now well, that, we'll be indulging. Is that per some sort of uh, some sort of schedule that you determined, or something that you looked up, and that's what you're following, or what? Where? Why is the cheat day three weeks in? Um, I'm following a calendar. Okay, I get two. Actually, it's I shouldn't say cheat day. I get two cheat meals a week. So there you go. Okay, tomorrow's my first one of this year. Well, I'm, really. I'm so, honored that this will be part of your cheat meal. It will be. I'm excited. I'm better, looking forward better to Better be it. good, I guess. It's going to be good. You toasted the sesame seeds. I did. Well, don't Richard Patrick me. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you toast them in like a skillet type of a, uh, apparatus or how does that work? It was you... it was actually on a skillet, yeah. I, on foil. I wrapped it, in, you know, mm-hmm. laid them out in foil and they were actually on a skillet. Happened to be cooking other things on the same skillet. Look at that. Two birds, one stone. Do we, do we get a little flavor in the sesame seeds of what you the other thing you were cooking? I doubt it. <laughs> I don't know. It was some leftover pizza on the skillet, so <laughs> I don't great. think you want that. Well, it is Italian, so you, you wouldn't really be yeah. able to tell. <laughs> Everything tastes like pizza from those Italians. <laughs> That's a good <laughs> slogan for a restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Everything tastes like pizza <laughs> from those Italians. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A gelato place. That Everything matter. tastes like pizza. Same difference. All right. Well, it's Chris's turn this week. It is to pick from the listener submission list. This is the last week. Last week of uh, January. Is yeah. It already. Yeah. yeah. It's the twenty what, wow. fourth. Fifth, twenty uh, fifth, yeah. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yep, so that's it. That'll do it. You know what next month is? I, I kind of, I think I do. You're gonna find out next week. But you know, that's why we need some uh, extreme rock and roll on this episode. All right. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna no, take any had, liberties there. I, I mean, we had extreme rock and roll last week. Well, that's <laughs> true. Uh, a different kind, hopefully, this week. But, uh, yes, point taken, Nick. 
<laughs> All right, so Chris, you should mosey your way on over here. Right. Nick's gonna pull the lever. I'm over not there. doing anything. To All me. right, well then Chris is Kidding. gonna Chris is gonna yank it. I slaved over a skillet. All right, up oh, he yanked it. Stand by. Let's go over to the bozo pewter. <laughs> I've pulled a song. Chris's uh, brow is furrowed. Yeah, I have n- no idea on this one, so I'm bushwhacking. Oh, wow. All right, here we go. Move along to the next trick. You've never heard of the art. <laughs> oh, pardon me. You've never heard of the artist? Artist, song, wow, any of it. Nothing. Yeah. Some bullshit unsigned band by. A friend or family member, <laughs> or or worse, the person who submitted it. So oh, no. yeah, it's not happening. <laughs> All right, well, one more crank. Uh, <sighs> We've got another one. It's been yeah, pulled. No, absolutely not. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the first one counts either because it was a bogus band. So this might be. Uh, well, a modified Chris Brown rule if you choose rolling. to go that route, or we can just keep going until we find something we like. Yeah, I mean, this being the last week before February, we're not stopping until I get one that's acceptable. All right. It's encouraging. The first two were woefully short. <laughs> now, you're familiar with the second one? Unfortunately. Oh, yes. wow. That but I'm not, I'm not in the mood for okay. that, for that type of, of episode. <laughs> I'm glad you're not. All right, here we go. Uh, there's, there's one song in particular that I just I hope for for the quote unquote evisceration. Okay. Now this one's been submitted twice and both by esteemed potheads, oh. individuals I That's recognize. Usually, usually a good sign. Um comments? any What's comments? That? Okay, I like that. That's intriguing. The other one has nothing. Oh. This, the other submission has no comment. Hmm. Yeah, why not? Oh. It's not what I was envisioning, but uh, I'm, I'm intrigued, so let's do oh. it. Now, <clears throat> the word intrigue being included leads me to believe that it's something you're, at least the song, something you're not terribly familiar with. Well, everybody knows what the song and the artist are, except you at this point, <laughs> yeah. Nick. So uh, might as well just spill it, and then we can discuss okay. it. Pull out, uh, bring Tuge out of this, uh, whatever, coffin rock from under which he emerges to announce the song. <laughs> and let's move ahead. All right, here we go. All right, Harold! This one's called... Do Not Disturb... Off of uh, vicious by the band Hailstorm. Ow! Oh, okay. I'm familiar with the band. Um, familiar with the front woman, Lizzie Hale. Oh, I guess. Lizzie. Oh, yeah. No. Put no, an no. I in there. Yeah. I'm already mad. She's doing the uh, what the weekend style yeah. of eliminating a vowel. It bothers me every time I see it. I've never known that. She's had a handicap already on this episode. It's just L Z Z Y. Yeah. Okay. But I can't say that I've ever heard, knowingly heard a song by these these uh, individuals. I think I've only heard one or two cover songs. I think they've got a decent amount of covers in their repertoire. Don't ask me why I know that, but I think I heard, I don't remember what the song was. But I'm, I, I've heard the band. But uh, what what was the uh, comment from? I believe it was Eric Lafart who uh, <laughs> submitted this one. All right. So Eric said the lyrical content is money for the pot format. Okay. So and, uh, that's that's what that was the tipping point. And it's called Vicious. That's the album, oh. right? The song is Do Not Disturb. Is correct. <clears throat> and the other submission was by Ahmed Koreshi. We've seen oh, yes. okay. pop up, so might be a couple new sticker guys. 
Why wouldn't it be? Well, the last couple we had were repeats, and I didn't bother sending them. Oh, yeah. Fuck that. <laughs> so. Yeah. I mean, there's only so much uh, effort we're going to put in for that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, and just for the record, seeing that uh, there's a, 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 a connection in verbiage. The second pull was another disturbed song. Oh, There's no man. way in hell I was going to do that. Yeah, I'm glad not, you said no. It's not in the mood for that. And again, like I said, the first one, completely unknown, not happening. <laughs> so I guess yeah, uh, the, I guess I adhered to the Chris Brown rule. I, I was not going to just uh, settle for garbage on well. uh, pull three. But the, again, the comment was the tipping point leave comments when you're uh, submitting songs well unfortunately the chris brown rule reared its head to pick a, a woman vocalist oh my gosh that's the first one we've ever had i think that's the first female lead we've ever experienced on in eight years in several years oh. there's never been one right no i not, can't think of not one at all How I about mean, that we've only gotten backup singers hmm. and i you know I had a clip to play for this occasion, and I never got it. <laughs> now I'm mad at myself. Just put it in afterwards. Okay, maybe I will. If I did, there it was. A rare example of post-production work on this uh, show. Yeah. So how many albums also, I, does this band also, have out? Oh, also, now I have to apologize <laughs> for my clip for that what I you just did. Yep. I'm it was not, insensitive, not inappropriate. Where, now I feel partially responsible. Not where my head should be at in 2021. Okay, now go ahead. How many albums have these guys put out, and how long have they been around? I know very little about yeah. them, but it looks like they have four albums. First okay. one was 09. This is from the most recent one, which is 2018. All right. So. Okay. This is one of those bands. I don't know anything about them other than that they have a female lead singer. And that and, they're usually booked on all those big festivals that everyone else is booked on in Europe. Yeah, like your downloads and yeah. uh, walking or walking, whatever it is. Correct. And then the other part is anytime you look at Blabbermouth, yeah. pretty much any day you yeah, see they, something about Hailstorm. They, they so. get a lot of uh, uh, virtual ink. Yeah, from them. Yeah, and I do know that the front woman has her own signature uh, Gibson Explorer as a guitar nerd. I'm aware of that, but uh, okay, have no clue about these guys. Uh, I, I, I got to say that the whole, the whole active rock uh, genre has essentially eluded me, ex- with with very r- rare exceptions. First of all, there's really no place to listen to that on the radio not that i listen to much radio anymore but um i can't think of a station in town that uh plays the the act of rock can you i can't really think of too many stations in town period no i'm honest with you i think the only way to hear it on any kind of radio would be on sirius well I, i will say that uh you know uh the employer of our friend meltdown wraf in detroit Plays a lot of the classic stuff and stuff we're familiar with, but they also do a lot of the modern stuff mixed in. Mixed in, so that's why I believe they're still one of the last stations standing from the way back when, because they've remained relevant with a younger audience. Hmm. Can I bring it uh, almost full circle here for you? Sure, why not? Um, Just toast that sesame seed. (laughs) (laughs) Flip it over. Cruising the Wikipedia. Speaking of flip it over, I was watching part of Uncle Buck earlier. That giant pancake with the... uh, with the snow shovel. Brilliant comedy. <laughs> a movie I've never seen. I saw it in the theater, I'm proud to say. Wow. You surprised a lot of people. Uh, being the John Candy fan I am, I've never seen it. Well, we'll have to take care of that. But anyway, on Wikipedia, I just happened to see uh, front woman uh, Hale's vocals are featured in a cover of Close My Eyes Forever on an album... Of David Draymond's new project oh, device. Christ. So this is what we're dealing with. This is what we've got. Th- this is this is the circle that uh, that they're running in. Well, that doesn't 
That doesn't entirely thing. surprise me because, again, I, I think uh, Disturbed falls under that active rock moniker. But uh, unfortunately, I'm uh, familiar with Disturbed and I know they're crap and I know that I hate them. <laughs> I'm going to give Hailstorm the benefit of the doubt going into this thing. Mm. Plus, I'm intrigued and interested in hearing what the lyrical content is that uh, inspired that comment from Eric yeah. Lafart. I, I have a, I have a lyrical uh, theme in my head of what I think it's <laughs> going to be. Okay. It's not too hard to, to guess. All right. But we'll see. No. Well. Are you guys ready? Yeah, why not? All right. So you well, said this is off their most recent release. Yes. And when, what year did that one come out? 2018. Okay. Yep. So they're probably like uh, most other bands are uh, waiting to release new material until the pandemic is over and they can tour it and drum up some sales, hopefully, with yeah. live performances. But I'm sure... Yeah, this is a, you know, completely new uh, territory for me, so why not? Yeah, interesting pick. Same here, have no idea, but I'm ready. After this commercial, after these words from this wonderful sponsor. Ah, yes. Who could forget them? (laughs) What was that 800 number at the end? The guy was talking too fast. I tried writing it down down with my pot of thunder pen. 1-800-THOSE-ITALIANS. (laughs) 1-800-EVERYTHING-TASTES-LIKE-PIZZA. All right, well, without any further ado... Cool groove. Yeah, I don't mind it. Kind of down tempo. Um, you know, I, I I tend to even even before I became a broken down old man that I am today, I tend to prefer prefer slower tempos than like super fast tempos. So I don't know if this is an anomaly for these guys or if this is their wheelhouse. But so far, so well, good. It's nice and punchy. The sand is kind of tight, huh? This song has the little star next to it, which means it's a single, I guess. So okay. this must be mm. exemplary of what they do. I don't know. Oh, you never know. Who knows? Uh, but I'm trying to think of uh, just that rhythm um, for that riff. It's totally clicking with me that it's very similar to something else. Mm. I can't think of what it is, though. I think we should make out... In a few hours I'm getting on a plane There's a pretty safe bet you'll never see me again yeah. Some sleazy right. bass work going yeah. on there and what was, I think we should make out, wasn't that the first one? <laughs> yeah, that's what she said <sighs> Okay, <laughs> what was the rest of it though? For, for hours? I no, think she uh, said, I'm getting on a, getting on a plane. Sorry, I'm going to pull these hours, lyrics yeah. up. She said, I think we should make out, in a few hours, I'm getting on a plane. There's a pretty safe bet. You'll never see me again. Yeah. So, All right, this well, reminds me of a Kiss song that Andy seems to uh, be obsessed with. Room service? No, I'll say yeah. Oh, say yeah. Who knows where you'll be in the morning? Mm-hmm. I know we're here tonight. Um, oh, boy. Well, this kind of gives you a. Uh, at this kind of this kind of gives you a, a, a definite, immediate indication that the lyrical content is coming from the woman's perspective. Yeah. Because if it was from the man's perspective, it'd be like, "Let's fuck. Give me a blowjob. I'm getting on a plane in a few hours." You well, know. Don't get ahead of yourself. Oh boy. Oh, all right. Well. <laughs> Maybe that maybe maybe that is the starting point, yeah. uh, which usually it is in this mm-hmm. sort of encounter. Mm-hmm. But uh, I'm looking ahead, so they're forcing a little genuine romance into this uh, this tight schedule that she's got. A couple hours, yeah. Hey, again, from Some... the woman's perspective, you know, not as crude and uh, caveman like as coming from a man. You know, another 
band uh, or artist that gets played a lot on uh, the Mighty Riff in Detroit, Kid Rock, has the this song is so hot, includes the lyric, I want to <laughs> fuck you like I'm never going to see you again. That's from the male point of view. Mm-hmm. So far, this is from the woman's point of view, but <laughs> based on uh, Eric Latar- Lafarts, excuse me, almost mis- or pronounced <laughs> yeah, it correctly initially, um, based on his comment and what Andy is obviously scanned ahead here, we might be in for something. So. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I love your accent I wonder what it'll sound like when you come Let's see if thumbs on Well, see you guys later <laughs> That'll do it Thank you for tuning in We had a Almost Made it to eight years yeah, what a, what what a uh, segue into February. This is a, a different take on the uh, sort of mating ritual through music. Oh but, I, uh, does it say Lisa Lampanelli is a co-writer on this? <laughs> <laughs> Just curious. <laughs> so, do what, do accents tend to disappear when a man is vocal during the? Uh, orgasm i mean is this are they like british guys who just suddenly lose the accent inexplicably they become american cavemen in that moment sound like suddenly they're from the bronx or from (laughs) boston somewhere you know they lure you in with this sophisticated uh british accent and then when they uh blast off they turn into lexington steel or (laughs) bowser from (laughs) shauna One or the other, yeah. <laughs> but that would be my question: Is like, does she really expect the accent to sound different? I mean, well, I think that she's wondering the same thing you are, or is she this... just she wants to know? But I'm wondering that only because she brought it up. Oh. It never would have occurred to me to think that if I like your accent, why would I wonder what it sounds like? Yeah. When you have an orgasm, I mean, it's just going to sound the same thing. You're just going to say different words at a different volume level. I mean, <laughs> I don't, I, I, that that's where I'm kind of getting locked up here. Uh, I don't know. It, to, to me, that sounds like a... <laughs> well, if you're British, you probably sound like Naughty Holder at that point. <laughs> yeah, you look like him, too. <laughs> Eyes bugging out, you know, hair all wigged out like you just stuck your dick in an electrical socket which maybe you did being with this woman but um, have, have either of you guys ever been told by uh, anyone not from this area that you have some sort of accent yeah i get told that all the time Do you really? nobody can pinpoint it and i don't think i have an accent I don't either th- i know i understand that i have a unique way of talking but mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's any sort of like uh like a regional? Uh, yeah. I don't think it's any sort of typical accent. I don't know where my vocal inflection comes from, but I've been told I have a, a uniqueness about it. When I went to Germany, everybody I talked to, they seemed to have learned English from British people. Or like that was the focus of their English mm. learning. And I felt like such a farmer out there. <laughs> like, cut it, you know, the way I, what letters I pronounce and don't pronounce. Oh, versus yeah. the way they do, which British people cut letters out too. British people cut out m- multiple syllables. Yeah, let's not give them no. credit for speaking correctly no, either. No. no, but it's no. just different, and I just I, I felt kind of yeah. I felt my accent there. <laughs> yeah, it's How different and uh, yeah. therefore exotic. Yeah, but, that's uh, true. You know, but you were a bit of an anomaly, so you were probably. Uh, curiosity to these people yeah for many possibly reasons. inducing the same question in all the women <laughs> around you in germany that were, we just heard in the song <laughs> of course none of them decided to pursue no, it they no. were just mildly curious like yeah. what does this dipshit sound like when he comes <laughs> yeah. the lady at mcdonald's said that yeah. while my order was getting made and then they're like yeah i don't really want to find out that bad she's so. getting, getting your beer oh, at yeah. mcdonald's <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's continue, guys. What do you say? Yeah, why not?
This is a very um, new metal rap kind yeah. of a thing happening yeah, and, during and, the chorus. And, and, and you know what? The 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 the, the, the sort of intentionally inserted sort of guttural vocal there it's very very disturbed esque which is not pleasing me but uh so what are these lyrics andy what she said was let's see if blondes or brunettes have more fun i'm on the very top floor room 1334 there's a king size bed but we can do it on the floor Turn your cell phone off. Okay, that's a deal breaker. Right <laughs> yeah, I've, 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 I've got to check the sports scores. And, you know, my DraftKings account. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm going to have no. to draw the line at turning my cell phone off. I mean, yeah. what, what, what kind of? Yeah. Who, who asks somebody to do is that? It? It's outrageous. Well, hopefully, this is a negotiation stage and not a yeah, not a re- not a just you know requirement. Yeah, yeah. So, well, it, that's good. It's it's a king size bed. It's not the uh, the Lucy and Ricky arrangement of two twins. <laughs> Sometimes you have to settle for that when then the king suite is not available. Yeah. But uh, uh, what was la- oh? She said, "Leave a sign at the door that says do not disturb.'" Okay, that's easily done. <laughs> <laughs> So, so what, what happens in the throes of passion? You accidentally put the service needed in this room side <laughs> out, and the, the uh, cleaning person busts in when you're on the floor doing, uh, you know, making weird accents as you uh, explode weird, under Lizzie Hale. Weird you know accents. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it's happened before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if it's a if it's a double twin situation, I wonder if uh, hotels have Andy and or Rich's number so they can take the beds apart and move them together. <laughs> We're very good at as that. we've seen it happen. Yeah, either that or you get really exotic and do a, a planking situation between the beds. <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme, yeah, sort of like uh, <laughs> you know the, the the connector and the letter H, if you will. Yeah. That would be pretty yeah, intense. That would yeah. work. That would really test the extreme uh, attitude of this uh, protagonist in this song. Hope there's hope there's an ice machine yeah, on turn that your, floor. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Turn your cell phone off. I don't know, man. I, I got to think about that one. That almost sounds like a crime's going to be committed. Yeah. Not yeah, either. you're gonna get in the room and you don't know who's lurking in the corner. Yeah. All right, let's continue. And if I were you, I'd bring your girlfriend to a two is better than one, three is better than two. I'd leave a sign at the door the whole night through. It says, do not disturb, do not disturb. Wait a minute. <laughs> easy, easy. <laughs> And he's having a tough no, time. With it's an this. it's an unimportant detail, but what she said was, "Let me go back here to this whole part we just went over." If I were you, I'd bring your girlfriend too. Two is better than one. Three is better than two. Leave a sign on the door the whole night through that says "Do not disturb." So I was just thinking. She said we only have a couple hours because she's getting on a flight, but now it's the whole night, so what's going well, on? Well, then she, she's going to leave, and you can just stay there with your girlfriend who you've well, brought into the mix. Just consider it. You don't have to yeah. leave. Well, wow. so if you stay late, there, she's all right with getting yeah, over and a, and after Yeah, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> well, and after she leaves, you, you, you empty the wet bar, yep. uh, <laughs> punch up all the pornography. And just uh, <laughs> give her a nice surprise on her yeah. ca- credit card. Bill. Order all the crepes. Yeah. <laughs> and just, uh, you know. Lover's breakfast yeah. for the whole floor. Yeah. The whole 13th floor. Yeah. It's, the, it's, the, it's the Led Zeppelin. Uh, the, the, would, something yeah. they would do. Rent out the whole floor. <laughs> crepes for everybody. Just eat packages of cashews after cashews. <laughs> you know, the... Uh, the the nut sleeve that probably costs ten dollars if you make the mistake of uh, partaking in it. Just, yeah, give her a nice little surprise on her credit card bill, Miss. Uh, you know, 
do it on the floor. Let's have a threesome. I want to hear what you sound like when you come. You know, she's going to come crashing back to earth <laughs> after she sees that. Yeah, crack en- enough of this bravado. Yeah. It's like, uh, yeah, I shouldn't have hooked up with these weirdos, m- much less left them in my hotel room after I had to go get on well, a plane. What happens when you think with whatever you're thinking with there, lady? Yeah, well, see, there are consequences. Consequences. All right. Let's take our clothes off. Okay. <laughs> I want to show you my head and tattoo that nobody ever gets to see but you do. All right. Okay, so- I don't believe that for a second. Okay. <laughs> Any hey. any idiot with an yeah. accent has seen that tattoo. Yeah, that's what, yes, exactly. <laughs> I, I, you're talking to me that way. You're you're uh, uh, instigating this encounter. I ain't the first person who's ever seen that. I wonder what the tattoo since the is. tattoo artist is either. Yeah. Anyway, is well, it hidden because it, it's regrettable? <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Is it one of those Bill Clinton tattoos that I saw pictures of in the nineties? <laughs> <laughs> hopefully it's not hidden by a uh, fold of fat that she's let herself go and uh, you know when she she got the tattoo she was a a young tight bodied thing and now it's 20 years later and it's hidden by her, her no decrepit physique <laughs> nobody wants to see it either <laughs> Yeah, oh, boy. I don't know. Yeah, if that were the case, she would have said, "Hold on, give me a few minutes to locate it." <laughs> yeah, let's take our clothes off. You know that that's a yeah. reasonable request. I'm, I'm still still just shaking my head over. Turn your cell phone off. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's you know. Yeah, this is not exactly. Get it. This isn't a movie theater. Lady. I mean, yeah, and you, you never know when the inspiration to create a meme is going to strike, and you pull up your meme generator app, and uh, you, know, you know the the Franklin Gibbs close up. Uh, suddenly, suddenly, inspiration strikes. It's like, no, nah, I, I can't have my cell phone yeah. off. That's Come true. On. That's true. Very good point. At that point, I've been like, you know what? I got to go to the bathroom. I just fucking leave. <laughs> and her phone's going to ding because she follows you now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, did you just post? Yeah, I did. <laughs> All right. So so we got the hidden tattoo that only it, it eyes for you, which is a lie. Yes. Was there anything after that? No. This? Okay. No. All right. Oh baby, let me taste ya, shake ya, tie you up and break ya, cause I've been alone, left on my own for so long, oh damn, too long, too long, too long, I say come on, I'm on the very top floor. So I just... <laughs> we're, I mean, obviously we're fixating on the lyrical content, but I've, I've heard her sing before, mm-hmm. and... Um, Got a great voice. Yeah, she's in the uh, like Joan Jett kind of you know yeah. next next uh, whatever <clears throat> modern day kind of Joan Jett. Yeah, voice. a little grit to it, you know. Yeah, a little aggression, but uh, you know, it's just like it, it's hard to believe that here in 2021 or back in 2018 when this was released, <clears throat> you know, it's still perceived as like edgy and taboo for a woman to be singing these these sentiments it's like haven't we gotten beyond that yet is it still a big deal because i mean well any popularity that this song generated is rooted in the fact no pun intended that uh, (laughs) that a woman is delivering this sentiment Really. Yeah, yeah, and it, I mean, I mean, it's a curiosity. It's like taboo. <laughs> Women are not supposed to. This is Lizzie Hale fronting a active rock quasi metal band. Should we be surprised at this? That she has, you know, these these feelings, desires, or puts these thoughts out in song. I, I don't see well, what the big surprise is. I'm, I'm thinking it's it's following. Uh, a trend that we've had in entertainment for several years where it's just, it's like a weird sort of empowerment uh 
feeling mm-hmm. that the that the performers are probably getting from putting that kind of thing out there. Okay. I'm assuming. I mean, that's that's it's what 2018, so it's did not we, that long. Did we ago. miss any lyrics there? Um, I don't know. She just said the same thing over and over. It was uh, tie you up and break you. Wasn't she did. that something in there? She said, "Oh baby, let me taste ya, okay. shake ya, tie shake you. me." <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want anyone. You had me. me. And then you lost me. <laughs> yeah, that quick. It's like, taste me works. Shaking? What? What, what is that going to involve? Yeah. I don't want anybody that, shaking Unless it's me. just are popping you, a quarter into the bed. Are, are, are you literally, <laughs> literally going to get me in a bear hug and like treat me like a martini? I mean, how, what, what is that even, how is that going to work? Maybe she has a foot spa. I could, she, you might travel with one. Thing. Yeah, some kind of vibrating thing. Wow. Well, yeah. Tie you up and break you. <laughs> okay. Because uh, I've been alone, left on my own for too long. And clearly. It's, it's turned into an interrogation yeah, scene. Exactly. Oh, damn. Too long. Too long. Too long. I said, come on now. <laughs> yeah. See, <laughs> I, yeah. I don't have a problem <laughs> with what's being said. Just to be clear. I'm not like, oh, because it's a woman saying this, it bothers me. It doesn't. I don't. I just... And not super into the song. It's I, just cliche. Yeah, really. I mean, it's can, just like it's like how can we ruffle some feathers and get yeah. some well, peak some interest, but not take it too far. You know, it's yeah. just it, it ends up being in that middle ground where it's just not interesting. To me, know? it's coming off a bit like when you're like in high school and you're at a friend's house and they're like a party or whatever what kind of parties were you going to not you didn't well, bring me and and uh, me at home and there and two girls from the party are kind of hugging on each other but they're looking around the whole time to see who's watching yeah it's kind of coming uh, off like okay. that What's, it's a show yeah think you don't so. think it's sincere is what you're telling no me? I, I it's not coming off that and way. it's also like Kind of reminding me of a female version of like some of Nickelback's creepier songs, like <laughs> "Figured You Out" or "Animals," where he's you know again they're they're trying to be sexy but come off as creepy. Yeah, I wouldn't say this is necessarily creepy, but it's just kind of it's not as sexy as I think she wanted it to be, at least from my perspective. But. Yeah. I'm also pretty jaded and, <laughs> and whatnot, and, and as you can, as you anybody who's, who's listened to my commentary can ascertain, I take things a little too literally. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, if she ends like, up. If, you, how are you going to shake me? Okay? <laughs> if she ends up robbing the guy at the end, then okay, yeah. well, then it comes it comes across the right way. Well, yeah, that'd be something else. Yeah, but just listening at this stage of my life, I want no part of any encounter like this. No, no, it's not a situation. First of all, that we would find ourselves. No, probably (laughs) that too. But but you know, we don't have accents. That's that's strike one. We're in the wrong. If we go somewhere, we do. Yeah, it depends on where you're at. It's the other people have the accent, no matter where I go. (laughs) Oh, okay. Yeah, I would have been out the door at the cell phone comment, (laughs) but even if I'd stuck it out, been like, you know what, I guess I could shut off my cell phone. Something interesting might happen here. The shaking and breaking would be, okay, I'm going to step back a minute and... uh, First of all, you're going to have to explain how you're going to shake me. Yeah, was, yeah. It, this chick's a weirdo at this point. Yeah. Could you show me on uh, someone else first what yeah. you're talking <laughs> about? Is there any, uh, can you pull, can I turn link. my cell phone back on and send pull up a, a YouTube uh, <laughs> yeah. video of, a, of an uh, example of how you how you plan to shake a 250-pound man? Uh yeah, so I don't know, and, and have it not be funny when it happens, right. or or yeah, funny in a not funny way. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just it's it's just confusing to yeah. me. And again, that's my issue taking things too literally. But I'm just these are the questions that spring to my mind when I hear this type of dirty talk. Yeah, and is there anything more contrived and? just misses the mark every time they do it than 
dirty talk <laughs> during this sort of thing by either men or women. It's like when you bust it out, it's just it never comes. What are you off doing? That. It is, <laughs> what are you doing? It never. It never achieves the desired result. Uh-uh. It one at some point in the encounter, one person or the other would be like, "What the fuck did you just say?" Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> like I'm, I'm not going to survive this. You yeah. know, it's like we it, need to talk. Right. It's like you, you take chances that you shouldn't take. And we need to go just, sit down at the kitchen table yeah, and exactly. talk this out right now. Yeah, that's when the safe word comes out. Everything comes to a screeching halt. <laughs> Start yelling Galapagos tortoise. Yeah. <laughs> Time out. The clothes come back on. The, the individuals are untied. Oh, yeah. The shaking stops. All of that stuff. The TV so. comes on. Yeah, exactly. Scanning channels. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. Room 1334, there's a king size bed. I'm picking to it on the floor. Turn your cell phone off. See the sound of the toilet says, do not disturb. I hate that doubling vocal where it's like they they, the super they, they high they, yeah, the, yeah it's like a pink tactic or a mm-hmm. Kelly Clarkson tactic yeah it's you know yeah let's let's uh, harmonize cell phone off in the background <laughs> it might be and, coming and we'll king see. size bed it's just I don't know that that and it's more of a production thing obviously the vocalist has to execute it but it's just like <laughs> you know. Like pink songs, all of her songs have that. She just doubles the chorus think, in a in a higher harmony and just uh, you know riffing on yeah. two or three words. It's just it's just annoying. It's it's like the vocal equivalent of the Zach Wild pinch harmonic. It's just <laughs> they they can't not do it. They can't leave it out. Yeah, and it's like a full uh, a full octave. It sounds like to me. It sounds it, like it's, it it's also, a doubled vocal, just a full yeah. And it higher. also seems to be unique or reserved for female vocalists. Like, why does every female vocalist have to do that? I don't know. It's it's impressed. Like, it sounds like it's difficult Is to it? do, but I don't well, sure. care. She's because, a great singer and you yeah. know, showing off her range. But yeah. you know, you know, cell phone off. Let's uh, <laughs> let's riff on that phrase. It's just I don't know. It's kind of weak. Uh, production uh tactic that again seems to be you know if you're a female vocalist you kind of have to do that to 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 uh get across uh, nowadays which is kind of stupid but yeah that uh that was not uh not to my liking uh. <laughs> Now, do we have any idea if Lizzie Hale is the lead guitarist as well in this band, or that I don't know? But I could try. I thought that was a pretty cool that. solo. Yeah. Kind of nice to hear a solo like that in a, a relatively well, not. I mean, it's only two, three years old at this point in a modern rock song. Mm-hmm. You don't hear that too often. I thought it was pretty good. I liked it. Yeah, so it's uh, from what I'm seeing, it's well, her and some other guy might have done that, but. Could a little it, uh, call and response does, action. Her, her, or some guy named Joe. Joe is the lead guitar player, but oh, there you I go. don't know. Oh yeah, no, never mind. I see that now. Totally, Joe. Good job, Joe. <laughs> Joe's killing it. Oh yeah, that was nice. Yeah, I yeah. thought it was good. That was such a typical Joe solo. <laughs> know it anywhere? Yeah. yeah, mixed well up, up, up front in your face. Yeah, uh, yeah, was, I thought it was, it was good. good. Now we get back into uh, the same know, thing we've fr- heard for the last fr- 90 yeah. seconds. This horrifying situation we found ourselves in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Wasn't that Jericho's room number that one time? <laughs> 1534? I think it was. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh, now things, everything's making sense. Now. <laughs> Remember how nice that room was that last time we hung out? Uh, oh, like, yeah, down by uh, the, like, what, UIC Pavilion or what? No, no it was the one? new place, the DePaul place. That's right. Uh, yeah. What was that? Win, Wintrust Arena. At the uh, South Loop there. Yeah. Right? That yeah. was a nice room. Sure was. guys all right now it's glory <laughs> yeah i mean they they really uh really beat that chorus into the ground and yeah. they beat it to the floor if you will knocked it off the <laughs> king size bed and onto the uh the ghastly carpet in that hotel room don't shine a bright <laughs> don't shine a uh uh uh, black light on anything in that room after this encounter. Mm-mm. All right, guys. Who wants to vote first? Kick in the crotch or sweet surrender? How about you vote first? Me? Yeah. Yeah, why not? You I never vote You first. never go first. I do. Never. All right. Not ever. true. That's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I think you know where this is going coming from me. <laughs> this is know. a... This is a do some yoga beforehand, do some practice <laughs> kicking, and kick this as far as I can, right in the crotch. It's a humiliating kick in the crotch! Again, to be clear, I don't have a problem with what's being said just before that accusation comes out, because I feel like that's, that's the defense of knocking something like this. That's not the issue. What's the defense? Like, oh, well, just you guys like it when Paul Stanley says stuff like that. Well, it's a, it's a shitty song. Paul versus... Stanley's way less threatening when he says it. <laughs> right, but you know what I mean. That's not the reason. The reason is because there's just something about the – Chris used the term active rock. I can't get into any of it. There's a cutoff for me. Uh, I don't know. And maybe just stylistically, that whole – genre doesn't do it for me again this goes back to the disturbed episode not to sound like a broken record but i think it's just when that music started to emerge i was at a certain point in my life where i took uh the music i liked too seriously and the music i didn't like too seriously and i've never gotten over that so i still hate it so and again another point that chris always makes every song pretty much we've ever talked about is pop in a way but this is produced as like top 40 pop but with a grittier woman's voice i just don't like the song i don't like the the way the hooks of it are like nick said it sounded like like a a poppy rap metal chorus i don't know it's not for me i don't like it kick in the crotch boo great voice good drummer yeah, Joe's killing it on the guitar. Great yeah. bass playing too. Yeah. Bass I just was, don't like it at all. Bass was the highlight. Yeah, yes. yeah, not for me. I'll go next. Okay, you may. I'll give it a. I'll give it a kick as oh. well. That's surprising. It's a humiliating <laughs> kick in the crotch. Um. I yeah. I musicianship wise, no complaints. You know, everybody sounded good on Agreed. this. Agreed. Um, it it is it it does come off like a like a kind of where the hook should be, and I guess it's sort of there. But the whole chorus, um, it comes off like a lazy new metal. Yet at the same time, that that dreaded m- blend that's been popular for about a decade or so, the rap country rock mm. kind of a vibe kind of has that too even though musically it's it does it's you can heavier. see some kind of line dancing happening uh, i mean you you if you bust out that chorus lyrically in a at a country show 
they're gonna lose I, their shit. Oh yeah. I mean, how many how many beers are gonna be held up in the air during that part, <laughs> singing along with it? It's yeah, it would get the place in a frenzy. Yeah, but it, it just it doesn't do it for me. Um, look at the way she's dancing. <laughs> look at that. Thought about I actually thought about that story earlier today. How could you not ridic- think about that story? ridiculous uh, situation? An outburst of uh, <laughs> idiocy <laughs> and mixed company. What an absolutely inappropriate on, in in a in a couple of different ways. Absolutely inappropriate. But not anyway. unlike what that guy said to me next to uh, Kilroy is uh, about the bartender. <laughs> yeah, we'll just get into all that. Sho- and, just shocking. Yeah, it's just I mean, who says that sort of thing when you don't know who you're talking <laughs> yeah, to? Yeah, right. It's like when you get in a cab, not that anybody gets in cabs anymore, but, you know, Uber driver or whatever. And they immediately go into some racist diatribe it's like you don't I, I could be married to a woman of color i could be i could be the 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 offspring of someone of color you don't know me how, how do you just come out with that stuff it's like all right i want to get a good tip from this guy i think yeah. i want to go for yeah. it yeah. <laughs> I'm, reading this, I'm reading this guy it's, he's yeah. i'm either getting nothing or i'm getting a huge yeah. hundred dollars <laughs> I'll be flabbergasted if this guy isn't a racist, too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, to button up, which uh, which I, I would immediately do hearing this kind of talk from this woman, <laughs> to button up my uh, my segment here, just in subject matter, it's like, all right, I, you know, I get it. Maybe it's edgy. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It, 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 when, when a guy does this, it's always sleazy in a song. Mm-hmm. When a girl does it, you don't expect it to be sleazy unless it's like Wendy O. Williams or something. Well, but I mean, but this comes off as sleazy as the sleaziest guy who ever sang a song like which this. Which they're, they're in, uh, you arrive at some level of equality then, which uh, I think maybe is what she was going for. Could be. But it, it, it's still, you know, a song like this or <clears throat> Figured You Out or Animals by Nickelback. You go through the lyrics and it's it's basically designed to whip people up into a frenzy who are, you know, sort of milk toast suburbanites who want to, like, feel like they're living life on the edge. But they would never engage in this type of behavior. And if the behavior started in their presence they would turn the cell phone back on and call the cops immediately <laughs> or just bolt out of the room because <clears throat> you know they they wouldn't want to do that in real life <laughs> i'm kicking in the crotch by the way i'm mm-hmm. voting now okay um, it's a humiliating kick in the crotch but you know it's just like uh, <clears throat> There's a bed here, but if we do it on the floor instead, it's going to be that much more exciting and against the grain, you know. And maybe if I tie you up for a portion of this uh, session, it's going to be real, especially memorable or whatever. You might get some corn chip remnants on your back or something. (laughs) That's what you want. Bedded Frito in your ass crack. (laughs) Uh, That's what we want. Yeah, but, you know, but it's like, you know the the, the 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 verbalization of what you're going to sound like when you have an orgasm and stuff, and it's just like all this like Fifty Shades of Grey yeah. shit that like you know when that movie came out again, all these white bread suburbanite women with Karen haircuts were all you know feeling empowered and uh, on top of the world, but you know if anybody ever initiated that uh, in their own life they would be completely horrified and <laughs> would not continue on with it so you know in some respect you know it, it, it's healthy to have those fantasies but this is not playing out in real life for anybody involved <laughs> so again I, my own cynicism is just probably killing my enjoyment of it but uh it it just seems like too again cliche you know it's like she she, 
she shouldn't have to resort to this to get attention. I mean, she again, she can clearly sing. The band can clearly play. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that all of their material isn't like this. But, you know, I'm sure uh, when they brought this uh, to the band, they were just like, oh, man, this is really going to get us some well, attention I here. Could see, yeah, I could see if you were a producer in the current climate, uh, musically and pop culturally, yeah, this is this is probably hitting the bullseye for what you're looking for to put out there. It's got it's something that it's direct because nuance nuance really isn't appreciated. I don't think these days. <laughs> there's no nuance no. here. There's there's nothing nothing suggestive. It's it's explicit, and that's that's what. Uh, it's either what people actually want or it's just what is being put out there predominantly. Yeah, I, mean, gone, I don't know. Gone are the lyrics of of the Bon Scott style of she wanted it hard, she wanted it fast, she liked it done medium rare. I mean, that you don't get that kind of winking double entendre and, uh, and uh, nuance. No, I mean, yeah. You get uh, turn your cell phone <laughs> off and... I'm gonna shake you and tie you up and break yeah. you. And, I mean, this eh, is okay. this is verging on the iced tea school of lyric writing. <laughs> That's a good comparison. <laughs> yeah, they probably performed together. At Very some of likely. Festivals. Yeah. Hailstorm and body. They count. let they yeah. let him do the last verse. Just just wing it, <laughs> T. Can only imagine where it went. A mashup between this and talk shit get shot. <laughs> That'd be interesting. That would work. All right, and her 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 harmonies vocals would be talk shit, <laughs> get shot. Uh, Adding that little well, that and you know what? <laughs> that the beginning we had that little uh, funny sound clip reminds me of the uh, the what was it before the solo of uh, the body count song that we uh, oh, that yeah. we covered? Well, what was the who quote? The, <laughs> who the fuck is that bitch? Yeah, that's and then I, the solo starts. Yeah, bitch in the pit. Yeah, which was one of the first. There's that similar season two episodes. Very similar. Yeah. All right. Well, let's rubber stamp it. Yeah. Three kicks. That's just the fucking way it is. Hi guys, this is Paul Anka, <laughs> and you're listening to one of my favorite hangout places. Pot of Thunder. Stay tuned and don't miss it daily. They got it down and they do it my way. Anka, check it out. I think he's right. Yeah, listen to him. Don't miss it daily. Mm-hmm. Listen to old episodes if you have to. Yeah. But listen to it every day. Every day there's 390 whatever. Seven. Eight. This is 98. See, Anka would never resort to this type of lyrical delivery. Mm-hmm. He's got a little more depth to him. Mm-hmm. And he- apologies to... Lizzie Hale and Hailstorm, not that they give a rat's ass what our opinion is, but, you know, like we said, it, it, it was the music was great. There's a guitar solo in there that harkens back to the great guitar solos of the past. It was punchy. It was, it was not a wall of noise like a fucking Disturbed song is. Um, yeah, it's you true. Know, it was good. It's just, I don't know, that, that whole it was drawing lyrical on, thing, it's like... Yeah. It was you drawing know, on other things that are uh, not as hearkening back to Alanis Morissette. You ought to know. It's like the, the whole you know, everybody's like, "Oh my god, did she just say she's going to go down on the Full House guy in a movie <laughs> theater?" And it's like that line right there was the the linchpin for her entire career. And she true. did a, a bunch of other songs that uh, you know. Had a little more substance to him, but you know, she went for the throat with that uh, <clears throat> lyric, and <laughs> well said, yeah, and uh, and just led with the throat, yeah, and just the uh. the, the, the whole. Uh, I want to hear what it, your accent sounds like when you come. Reminded me of that, and it's just yeah. like it's the kind of line. Yes, it's going to get you attention, and you're going to make you sound like edgy and empowered. But it, it, at this point, it's kind of cliche. Mm-hmm. And when Nick mentioned that it re- sounded like a modern country thing, that kind of ruined the whole thing for me. Anything that I did like about it, any positive takeaways, kind of went out the window when Nick said that. Well, I mean, it's it might as well be save a horse, ride a cowboy. There you go. When you that's what I thought of when you said it, and then I pictured like 
20 years, whatever, 15 years ago being at bars where people would get on the on the bar and do that like yeah. like you're yeah. climbing coyote, yeah. coyote ugly. yeah like you're <laughs> yeah. swinging a lasso around yeah. thing. it's like oh yeah. get get me out of here oh this song is tailor made for that yeah so that ruined it sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> my my erection is over yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. it's all over yeah all right well guess what time it is it's time for a commercial oh good all right. I love that one. That's one of my favorites. I don't miss that daily. Yeah. <laughs> and that place is one of my favorite hangout spots. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the place where they swing imaginary lassos. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, when you started doing that move, I could just picture a whole room full of people doing yeah. that. I was like, I need to get the hell out of here <laughs> now. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I would never end up in that situation ever uh, of my own accord, but, no, or even accidentally. But if I did, I, I'd, I'd get the fuck. Oh, out of I there did on like, accident. That happened to me. <laughs> at the there's a place over here, not far away. It was called the Jack Rabbit. It was on uh, 41 in Highland. It's across the street from Minor Dunn. It's closed now. It oh, was that Bugsies. Place. Oh, Bugsies, that place. I remember. Yeah. So it used to be Bugsies, and they always had like live reggae. Live reggae, and they had Ronnie Baker Brooks, all like weekly blues, live blues. Yeah, I never went into that place. It was fine when it was Bugsies. Then they sold it, and it became Jack Rabbits. And they were trying real hard to do the Coyote Ugly thing with the girls dressed as cowgirls doing that. Which is lasso. not a bad look. I it's mean, not a bad look. But, right, but once the a- actual activity starts, yeah. it's like, okay. I can't take any more of this. Being in the the company of all those people who are hooting and hollering during those songs and lassoing and whatever else they're doing, it's like, let's leave. Well, another move they do is like <laughs> this thing, like they're you know riding the horse and yeah. swinging their hand back and forth. It's just like okay, get me <laughs> out of here. Yeah. Wow. Can't do it. This makes me realize just how blissfully ignorant I See? go through life. Oh, like, I'm, I'm small I'm, smiles yeah, over there. Couldn't be happier to be <laughs> oblivious to that uh, activity. And as it should be, what do I always say? Do people who are swinging imaginary lassos want some fifty-four-year-old asshole in there? The answer is no. No, but at the time, you barely would have been forty that I'm talking about. So even you, then, yeah. You know, I mean, That's still too much. Yeah. <clears throat> Even then, they don't want you there. So <laughs> maybe they want you there because they assume you're older and you have money and you'll buy them around to shots. But other than that, you're f- fucking worthless to them. <laughs> I'm so glad that I have absolutely nothing to do with bar culture. Oh, I was way. thinking the same thing. It's like, you know, the p- pandemic sucks for, like, people who are young enough to Mm -hmm. engage in nightlife and that's been taken away and i I, I get how that probably sucks for them but i'm not affected negatively in that way whatsoever no like i'm I'm in bed by fucking nine o'clock and i'm happy about it (laughs) all right well guess what time it is guys I don't get yards of questions, motherfucker. I give them. Send away. Yes, chief. Uh. We should do a double feature. Eddie given Sunday, Uncle Buck. That would oh, be man. quite a. Uh, oh man. Quite a dual threat. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind watching Uncle Buck again because I. I don't even know if I... I can't imagine I was actually in adulthood the last time I saw the whole thing. Yeah. There's probably a lot that I... You've seen it, Andy? Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it recently, too. Recently being like the last five years. I'm going to put it on when I get home, actually. There you go. I've never never seen it. Laurie Metcalf, still still terrifying... Kind of like uh, the woman being portrayed in the song. Maybe maybe (laughs) the way she's coming on to Buck. Terri- Maybe she was the inspiration for Do Not Disturb. <laughs> Terrifying. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? We got some good ones. <laughs> I feel, 
feel a mashup coming on, actually, now that I think of it. Uncle Buck. When, when they're, doing the, they're doing the twist or whatever they're doing in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. The official music video <laughs> for... Nick's being inspired uh, to fire up the uh, YouTube channel. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. It's been a while. Hey, I don't, I don't blame him. The man created magic and nobody consumed it. No. I, 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 at some point, you're going to get frustrated. He's not lips from Anvil. He's not just going to keep <laughs> plowing ahead when nobody's paying no attention whatsoever to anything he's doing. Right. You know, Nick has, a, has <laughs> self-pride and standards, but, you know... <laughs> It might I'm not sensing be, some inspiration. It might not striking. be a long video, but I think it might be a video. The shorter, the better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how it's going to look. But uh, hey. I can picture it right now. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> this is how it, the magic happens. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm already excited for it. See, some good came of this episode. Yeah, see? Well, yeah. You never know what's going to happen with whatever <laughs> song we end up with. Uh, All right. This week's Yard of Questions comes to us from Jerry Kern. What's going on, Jerry? Hey, Jerry. Oh, he's from. he lives in China, doesn't he? Yeah. yeah. Damn. Jerome Kern. He's got to be our only person listening in China. I don't know. I've never heard. I mean, hey, there could be people who don't write to us, but I've never heard from anyone else. All right, question one from Jerry. What album title best describes your life? Oh, that could be literally, or that could be comedically. That's a, that's a uh, great question, actually. Yeah. I'm running through some album titles right now. So many. Uh, uh, let's see. Anything, Nick? Not yet. <laughs> That's why it's a great question. It's a fun question. I'm just, I'm just, ha- I'm, I'm looking for just that right one. Yeah. Probably one of those Volbeat uh, yeah, <laughs> titles. That's a tough one. That is, I'm that's, it's on tough, that one. but it's a but I I like it. It's well, maybe we'll come back to it. Yeah, maybe. All right, let's do that. Question two: What song hits you with a wave of nostalgia every time you hear it? Hmm. Well, I'll answer that. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, the guy who lived next door to me in the dorm when I was a sophomore and he was a freshman, came passing through uh, town this week and we had, went out to around the clock and had breakfast. And uh, So we used to put together these mixtapes and play at our, uh, you know, dorm floor parties and whatnot and uh since you're gone by the cars was on Mm. one of them and uh i always get nostalgic for the times when this lyric came up me and this guy would throw our arm you know one arm around each other's shoulders and and scream it at the top of our lungs in uh in unison with rick okazic I took the big vacation. I have no idea why we latched on to that uh, <laughs> lyric, but whenever that song comes on, I, I transported back to college, and then when that uh, lyric comes out, I can't resist just belting it out out loud. It doesn't matter where I am. So That's a good one. Well, I can answer question number one and oh. question number two with the same answer. Interesting. Okay. With a self-titled track off of the... Uh, off of the Mr. Boombastic album. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's, that's good. A, and that and it legitimately it does. There's a wave of nostalgia, um, primarily because I uh, I was into that album mm-hmm. uh, pretty heavily uh, 
when my wife and I started dating years and years and years. And who, who did that album? And, uh, and like, the, the Shaggy. Oh, okay. Yeah, All that right. was that that not just that song, but that whole album was was my jam for a while there. I have to go back and listen. To yeah, it. now I'm thinking about it too. I, I'm sure I've got it somewhere. That might be uh, February. Oh, oh Ooh. man, some Shaggy. That'd be nice. Good well, work. I throw that in the mix. My goodness. Yeah, I'm still not arriving on an answer to question one, but I don't think I'm going to top Nix. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go to question three, and then Chris can come back to his first answer. Question three, when was the last time you immediately regretted something you said? <laughs> what time is it right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man Dude I do that all the time Truth be told I do it all the time And I walk away from From interactions Saying to myself why did I say that And you you can, you can know you're saying it Mid sentence but you're just like I can't stop mid sentence I've got to let this all out and then own it But yeah. at least in my uh, Case The uh I know as it's coming out that it's going to be a disaster, and I just can't uh, can't just cut it off mid sentence. I usually know that while, said, while I'm, I'm listening to, to the other person yeah. getting my statement prepared. <laughs> it's not going to it's going to fall on the floor and lie there. <laughs> yeah, and, and like Nick, I do it all the time, but again, I'm blanking on a good example. I mean, <laughs> uh, yeah, I I mean. I, I get confused looks from people quite a bit. <laughs> we have to give an example. No, huh? you don't have to. Yeah, these are tough questions. It's like there's so many choices, but I can't land on one that yeah. that uh, really hits the hits the these target. Are, these are these are really really great questions too. By the way, I know I keep saying that, but it's true. Yeah. These are fun. Um, I mean, it had to have been something stupid I said to my wife. I mean, I, I do that on a daily basis, oh, sometimes an hourly basis. I just can't <laughs> think of anything right now. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Usually my wife is, she'll usually laugh. Not all the time. Sometimes it's so stupid. Do you say something stupid? Oh, yeah. I tried to be funny. And, oh, okay. And it, and it doesn't, you know, it doesn't land, as they say. That's not really regrettable, then. No, kind of that's like, not really. The only, yeah, and that's laughing si- at a bad joke is not. In that situation, it's only regrettable if it's heated and serious. But usually for me, it's when I'm trying to say something that I think is going to be funny, mm-hmm. and then you could tell the other person's just absolutely outraged that I even would have the audacity to say what I just said. <laughs> like in one of your uh, family chat rooms that you uh, or at, I get at any holiday gathering. I get yeah, I get nothing anymore. <laughs> I think I'm blocked by everybody. They started a new one. In the- everybody but Nick. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> I get. I just get ignored at this point. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> I can't think of any that I'd like to share. Well, that's a, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's another wrinkle to it. That's, that's what I have I was one thinking. in mind, but I'd rather not share it. That's what I was, well. You could just say when was it? That was the question before Christmas. Okay. There you go. And I didn't regret it actually, so forget it. Okay, well, never mind. Uh, but a normal person would have regretted it immediately. <laughs> they would have—they would have been ashamed when they conceived the idea, and it wouldn't have gone any further. I'll just say it had something to do with it. it's a wonderful life. Oh boy, that could go a lot of directions. But okay, I thought—I thought of one. It's—it's—it it, it was actually in a in a, a semi work situation. Yeah. So in the immediate uh, or, or recent wake of the uh, uh, the George Floyd thing, the Black oh, Lives Matter, mm-hmm. and uh, one of uh, one of my co well now our co-workers, she doesn't work at the company anymore, but uh, you know she was a a, a, 
a minority, and she organized these uh, sort of after work hours Zoom meetings to discuss like racial issues and stuff. And mm-hmm. a lot of people participated, um, you know, including me. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, we we're bantering about, and I was talking about I can't remember. Was talking about Lexington Steel? Well, no, <laughs> not that bad, but <laughs> but uh, in the in the in the course of what I was talking He's about, got tooth I, marks in his head. <laughs> well, but in, in the in the in the course of what I was saying, I used the term "shucking and jiving" and mm-hmm. not to illustrate that it's rooted in racism, because I didn't really put two and two together until as I was saying it, as the word "shucking" was coming out of my mouth, I was like. Oh my God, that's got to be rooted in racism. And, like, and sure enough, after right after I said it, I Googled it, and, and I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but it has to do with like slavery and like, yeah. you know, shucking yeah. corn well, and getting out of further work or something like that. But yeah, uh, but that I. That wasn't intentional. It wasn't least. intentional, so, but it's, basically, it's, I'm what I, I'm bringing that up to illustrate that as it was coming out of my mouth, I was like, I don't think I should should have said that or should be saying it. And sure enough, I was right. I think the uh, the, the other examples are just they're not coming to me, but trust me, there they 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 there's about five of them a week, at least. <laughs> All right, what about that album? Got one? Or? Uh, the only one I'm uh, coming up with is Welcome to My Nightmare. That's good. Like, like that why would, I, I'm still baffled that anybody associates with me on any, on any <laughs> level or in any capacity. Because if, if anybody knew what a complete hot mess I am on the inside, they would stay very far away from me. But... Uh, Astonishingly, I've uh, maintained a, a, a lot of pretty large social circle and some uh, a fair amount of friends, uh, despite my best efforts to <laughs> drive everyone away out of my life. So <laughs> I would say that one is probably the most accurate at this moment. Andy, do you have any? A regret thing? Jeez. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Not really. I'm trying to think of something. I'm I'm pretty good at not doing what Chris said he did. I've I've been very uh, fortunate with not slipping in the wrong company with things that I shouldn't say. If well, that makes sense. I have uh, now that you mention that. Yeah. It's one I've told on the podcast before, but it's been a while, so I could bring it up, I guess. Mm-hmm. Cuz I think it's funny. I think what what the the one guy said to me was pretty funny cuz he was he was totally putting me on the spot after I said it, but it was at uh, a neighbor's uh, house and him and a couple of his buddies were out and I was out there with them. And the the one guy was a uh, well, I don't know what I don't know exactly, but he was he was a man of Asian descent. Okay, maybe not even descent. I think he's from somewhere in Asia directly, first okay. generation. And uh, he's there, and this other guy, just a guy from around here, mm-hmm. Caucasian guy from around here, and the three of us are talking, and the the. The Caucasian guy is seeing what he does for a living. He's like, uh, I'm just, I'm a salesman. He's like, I pretty much saw everything. Like, I, I'm like, so you're like the Oriental Trading Company, right? Because mm. there's that magazine that sells a, yeah. a ton of different things. And the, wow. the guy looks at me, and then he looks at the uh, the Asian guy. And goes, <laughs> he's standing right here. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he, he made it worse. I, but it he, was fine. he made it funny though. Actually, yeah. I, it was. We were laughing, but I was. I had. I still felt the need to. No, no, no. Here's what I was saying, and which I probably didn't need to do. Yeah. Just that made it worse, but... Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I got nothing. I don't know. I'm sh- I've am said stupid things, but I- things I regret, not really. Um, if-, if I can think of anything, it would be, like, back in our band days, just in, like, the... 
the early 20s drink too much and act too stupid and probably say things to people that you thought were funny but were just not nice and bordering on being a jerk you know I have, I have like a couple like fun that, of people yeah. directly when and taking it too far of making fun of your friends that's probably what it would be if anything yeah that's that's a territory that there are some groups of friends that that never goes away yeah it's all about brutality yeah no matter how old they are yeah but I really don't have anybody that <laughs> that's how we regard okay. each other at this point yeah yeah I mean that was more of like a high school thing you just trying to be funny yeah I mean, ideally you grow out of these types of things yeah but not everybody does no but yeah that's it for me Good questions, though. Yeah. yeah. I mean, those were, uh, again, uh, there are so many examples for answering question three. I just couldn't come up with any. Yeah. But, uh, good oh. stuff, Jerry. Thank you, coming, Jerry. Coming from China, mm-hmm. Oriental Trading Company <laughs> outpost out there, for <laughs> sure. <laughs> good place for it. <laughs> Good place. Huh? <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to submit your Yordo questions, go to Pottle. And there's another com. example. Something <laughs> stupid I just said that I shouldn't have said, and halfway through oh, okay. it, I knew it was stupid. Don't worry, I'll be asking Andy to edit several things out of this. Episode. Nothing's yeah, going. It's going to be a lot of no. post production on this. Uh, I should probably edit out that clip I played no. before the song started, but. Uh, I, maybe I, that's. I didn't say it, but maybe I regret that already. And, and we don't even know what it is, so there you go. No, it was the thing I played before the song. I thought that was part of the song. I honest to goodness thought that what? was a clip before the song no, started. No, you didn't. I honest to goodness thought that. I pressed the button. That, I was, that was I'm my not, clip. You, were, you are so smooth with your with oh. your on-the-fly production. Oh, that was me. And I'm not I'm not kidding. I thought that was part <laughs> of, I thought that was like a tongue-in-cheek thing at the beginning of the song. It would have worked. It, it fooled me. Nope. I had no idea. That's why I sent that picture to you on uh, <laughs> Oh, I did on see Facebook. That. I should have put it that's together. That's what track it was from. Can I, should I read the name of that track? You shouldn't. We okay. should get off before you say the first <laughs> word of that track. <laughs> that well, next week well, uh, begins February, and it's Andy's pick. Yeah, Ooh, that's man. exciting. Something to look forward what to. What could be better? I'm excited. I think I got it. I think I know where I'm going. I have no idea where I'm going. For my well, you pick. didn't last year either. You, you, That's true. The Dreezy Brothers. Someone hurry up and send us a KTEL record. Yeah. I need an idea. Yeah. Um, you know, we hope you'll tune in for the next four weeks. Uh, if you avoid February at your own peril. Yeah. You know, if you thought uh, the Hailstorm song was sexy. You don't know sexy. <laughs> yeah, you gonna... will learn about sexy if you tune into the next four episodes. Yeah, you're gonna get a month's worth. Yeah. You'll be rest assured. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And if you want to add any songs to the listener submission list, who knows? Maybe uh, we'll browse it for February. I don't know. Yeah, who knows? Why not? But if you want to add something, go ahead. Potofthunder.com. Make it happen. For all of your Pot of Thunder needs, we got it all on potofthunder.com, and we will be back next week. Bye-bye!